Hello and welcome to another last uh, last day profit portions. Uh, this is going to be video uh, number five already, and you know it's just been growing and growing. Uh, you know this is going to be a long series in, in uh, the Lord's prophets. You know what the Lord spoke through His prophets concerning the last days or the final week, as was uh, given to Angel Gabriel to Daniel. Uh, we're going to be uh, we're going to be actually it was decreed to to uh, Daniel. You know four hundred and ninety years okay and so we're waiting for that final last sabbatical cycle of seven years and so today's video it's actually we're going to stay in daniel uh we're going to be actually i'm going to be actually trying my best <laughs> to bring you the prophetic timeline okay the prophetic timeline of those uh, those situations and events that need to take place before what we are watching for right now as watchmen on the wall as believers in Yeshua Messiah before his glorious return what needs to take place and so i always mention there there has there's there's a uh, uh, prophetic uh, uh, scriptures that tell us uh, what needs to take place before that coming day in the Middle East in real time. Okay. And so many are thinking Iran, Iran, Iran. Yes, Iran is in power. Uh, ancient Persia. Okay. Uh, me, me, middle, middle Persia. Right. And so they are in power right now. We know this. We're going to be talking about Iran and Persia. Uh, we're also going to be talking about Turkey, Asia Minor. We're going to be going through, uh, Daniel chapter eight. The vision of the goat and the ram. Uh, also, we need to go to uh, Ezekiel 38 and 39 that coincides and tells us where this last time end times beast is going to come from. The feet, if you want to say, mixed with iron and clay, the ten toes and whatnot, as we're speaking about last last video. Okay, and so we're going to be talking about the vision Daniel had in chapter 8, the, the ram and the goat. Okay, and so... We want to know what we are looking for, what to watch for in the Middle East, okay? And so I got plenty for you, plenty for you. Um, first and foremost, I want to say Shabbat Shalom. Uh, right now, this is being recorded. It is actually uh, preparation day, okay? Right before uh, tonight at sunset, we, we're going to start a, a, a Sabbath day of rest you know, in the Lord. And so this will be airing then. And so I hope you're enjoying your rest tonight. Um, and so anyhow, let me go ahead and get on with it now. Okay. So also we're going to be bringing you a lot of maps, maps, maps. Okay. Maps, 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 uh, Bible Atlas maps, which, which is a big, uh, it's very important because we know when you go to Google search and search for maps, uh, people could cut and paste and do all sorts of, of things to maps, okay? They can place places where they're not even it's supposed to be and, uh, and then create false doctrines or false prophecies concerning other locations, okay? So we got to be careful not to just go to our Google search or any search and just look for maps because we might get something that's not actually there, you know? People mess with these things and, well, you know what I'm saying. So we're going to go to Bible Atlas maps, Bible Atlas atlas maps okay very important and once again i'm going to be bringing you all this through scriptures that's the most important thing right bringing it to you through scriptures and whatever sources that i do use i will put them in the description box so you can check it out yourself you could cross reference them you could cite them <laughs> and so uh let me go ahead and get going now okay so uh shabbat shalom okay shabbat shalom happy sabbath and so i'm going to do my best now so let's go ahead and open up the next uh, the next picture I have for you. I have plenty of pictures too, uh, so let me see if I can do my best to do this. Okay, so I set this up for you, and so here we go. Let me see if I can get that. Um, so yes, uh, remember the beautiful uh, the beautiful calendar. Okay, uh, that I I bring you almost all the time. Uh, remember, this is Yah Elohim's creation calendar. Uh, we have entered into the fourth month there. You see it right there, 5949, June and July. We got July 4th coming up, okay, Independence Day. Uh, but, uh, you know, today is June 28th, okay? And so uh, the Torah portion is Bo, okay? Bo, Yeshua, Bo. Come, Lord Jesus, come. Uh, Exodus 10, 1. Uh, through Exodus uh, 13, 16, and from the prophet Jeremiah 46, 13, 28. This is what's going on this Sabbath day reading, okay? And so in many, many, many services, okay, uh, everywhere, okay? And so 
that is the Torah portion. So uh, once again, let me go now to the next next picture I have for you. All right. And so, yes, so I brought you this picture, okay, uh, because of the fact, um, let me go ahead and remove this one out of the way so we can bring that picture up right there. All right, so we're going to, once again, we're going to be going through Daniel 8, okay? And uh, I got two flags there. So one is from Turkey, uh, modern-day Turkey, and so the other, Asia Minor, right? Ancient Asia Minor. And then we have Persia. We got the, the Iranian flag there. And so this is one of the things that must take place before uh, the ten nations come together and type the entire beast. Okay. It comes together. So this on the prophetic timeline, this is what we're looking for in the Middle East. Okay. And so we know Iran is in superpower right now. A lot of power belongs to Iran and all his conglomerates, the smaller groups that are under Iran right now. Um, also a lot of finances going through Qatar, you know, so, but we're going to, we're going to be focusing in on scripture. Uh, geographical locations on where uh, Persia is today and what where is Persia where was Persia where what is Persia today and uh, and so this is what we're going to be finding out the geographical locations concerning maps okay maps biblical atlas maps before the final end times beast comes this is what needs to take place and very first very first thing we need they need a caliphate they need a caliphate in order to begin all this. And so, number one, they need a cal caliphate. Number two, they need uh, Turkey is going to come against uh, Persia. So this is what we're going to be speaking about today in scriptures from Daniel 8 uh, and Ezekiel 38 and 39. Gog of Magog. Gog of Magog. So very important. So let me go ahead and get there now. And then I'll be bringing you those... Um, those uh um the pictures of the maps of the bible atlas maps okay and so in just a moment as we're going through the scriptures okay and so let me go ahead and get there now and uh remember i just want to bring this back to you okay remember this is what we're waiting for okay this is the the legs that were the ottoman empire as i hopefully i made it so clear that this was the ottoman empire uh, that, that, that was made of iron. Okay. The legs that, that passed now. And now we're looking for that same legs, which is connected. And, and, and just so you'll know in the picture right here, it's just perfect because we know the mixture of the iron goes into the feet there. You see that? So it is connected. There's no disconnecting it and saying, well, that's, that was this empire. Now this is this. It, it, it mixes, the mixes the two, okay? The seventh, which will be the eighth, as we read in the book of Revelation, okay, in the last video. And so made of iron and clay. And so this is what we're waiting for. The 10 toes, the 10 nations, the 10 horns, okay? And so the, the revival of the Ottoman Empire, Gog Magog, the end time Islamic Caliphate, anti-Messiah, super power beast, okay? And so this is what we're waiting for. And so uh, that will be the final beast. And so we're going to let's go ahead and get to scriptures now. OK, and so let me go ahead and get there. And uh, and hopefully everything turns out OK. Now, if there's a lot of freezes in the video, that's because I got Google Earth opened up. OK, got Google Earth opened up. And uh, my my computer, sometimes my CPU, it's not uh, it's not all that. OK, let's just put it. Put it to you that way so it, 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 it it's hard so the video will be freezing up but hopefully the audio uh will not be okay and so that's is what matters the most it doesn't matter if i freeze up okay like this <laughs> i'm just playing but um you know we're gonna get into a lot of doom and gloom so i and you know hopefully i bring the spirits up a little but this is remember this is all and all seriousness aside all serious, all, all joking aside and, and getting very serious. Uh, I mentioned in all my videos um, that the Lord wants complete repentance. He wants his name exalted. Number one, as I'm telling you this, I'm getting goosebumps all over my shoulders right now. Um, I know his Ruach is with me and I want to exalt his holy name, his holy ways, his commandments. 
his righteous rulings, his instructions, his Torah. I want to exalt him. And, and how do we exalt him? By our obedience. And I'll say that over and over in all my videos. This is why I bring you these scriptures. Not to say that, oh, I know prophecy or this and that. No, it's to exalt him. Number one, just as Daniel cried out, as we read, uh, Daniel's cry out, his prayer. And his prayer was heard because he repented. He repented on behalf of the nations. And the Lord wants his name exalted and glorified. This is what the Lord wants. He wants his name to be exalted. And how do we exalt his holy name? By living according to his ways. This is how we exalt his name. This is how we proclaim his name. By living according to his commandments and coming to complete repentance. Israel and all the surrounding nations. Israel was given this, this precious Torah to take to the nations so that the nations could see how to live. This is what the light of the earth, the light in Israel, Jerusalem, was given the holy oracles so they could take it out and be a light on the hill to all the surrounding nations. And the commandments could be lived out by those nations and they, they would repent. This is why they were given the Torah, the instructions and the commandments, so that all nations could bow down in, in obedience. He's going to have his way. Regardless, he's going to have his way. And so this is why this end times, this last tribulation happens. And so, you know, this is why I talk about it, so that others may realize this. And if it doesn't happen in our lifetime, today is a day of salvation. And we are to what? Train our children up in the ways of the Lord. So mostly, and I see it, how I see it, it's going to happen uh, after this last Jubilee. And so it will be for our grandkids, if anything, and our children. So we know we are commanded by the Lord to train our children up in the ways of the Lord. Deuteronomy chapter 6. To train them up in the ways of the Lord. The instructions, and not only that, in the Torah, in the Tanakh. So that they'll be ready and waiting for this and they'll be saved in a time that it might happen. It just might happen in our kids' lifetime. So we want to love our children. We want to prepare them for the end days, okay, for the last time. Because he's coming soon. He is coming soon. And everything is saying he's coming soon. All creation. And so we're going to go ahead and start this now. So blessed be the word of the Lord. I'm going to go ahead and pray in again. Uh, before I start reading his word. And so, and then we'll take it from there. Okay. So if you could pray with me on this Sabbath, uh, Sabbath day. Okay. And so, uh, dear Heavenly Father, as I bow before your holy presence once again, El of Abraham, El of Isaac, El of Jacob, El of Israel and Judah, blessed be you, Adonai, Yahweh Elohim, Yeshua Mashiach, Ruach HaKodesh, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, all in one, for you are one, Abba Father. You are Echad, King of the universe and creator of all things. May your name be highly exalted. And may many, many come to repentance. May many, many, we pray for the salvation of Israel. We pray for the shalom of Israel. But we know, Prince of Peace, you are the Prince of Peace, Yeshua. You are going to bring that shalom forever, forever upon your glorious return. And I want them to know this, that the true shalom forever will be when you bring it. And you establish your kingdom on earth. Abba, Father, may you open up the eyes and ears of those who may be listening now or those who might be listening and watching later. May you open up their eyes to your truth, Abba, Father, your truth only. May, be, may you be highly exalted, Abba, Father. In your holy and precious name I pray, Yeshua HaMashiach, Yahweh Elohim, for you are one. And we all say amen and amen and amen. Okay, so uh, this video, it might go like maybe a couple hours as usual. I'm thinking maybe a little less, little. So get comfortable and let me get some water. And uh, let's go ahead and start, okay? And by the way, I did mention my name. I'm sorry, you know, those that may, you, maybe you don't know my name. Um, you know, my name is David. It doesn't really matter, but my name is David, okay? Your beloved servant. Uh, the servant of the Most High God, Yahweh Elohim, Yeshua. And so um, we're going to go ahead and begin in Daniel 8. Okay, the vision 
of a ram and goat. Okay, the rip, rip, the vision of a ram and goat. Daniel chapter eight. Okay, so here we go. I'm reading out of the New King James Version. Okay, so in the third year of the reign of King Belshazzar, this is uh, Nebuchadnezzar's uh, son, a vision appeared to me, uh, Daniel, after one that appeared to me the first time, after the one that appeared to me the first time. I saw in the vision, and it so happened while I was looking, that I was in Shushan, the citadel, which is in the province of Elam. And I saw in the vision that I was by the river Ulai. Then I lifted my eyes and saw, and there standing beside the river was a ram which had two horns, and the two horns were high, but one was higher than the other. And the higher one came up last. I saw the ram pushing westward, northward, and southward so that no animal could withstand him, nor was there any that could deliver from his hand. But he did according to his will and became great. And so we continue to have this animal apocalypse. Uh, anim this is what they call the animal apocalypse because uh, he makes a lot of references to animals uh, in his uh, in visions, in prophetic passages, the book of Revelation, where he's always using animals, okay? And so, uh, not always, but for the most part, yes, okay? And so, and we know those animals are referring to, uh, once again, nations and whatnot, okay? And so, first and foremost, we want to get the geographical location. Remember, I was talking about the geographic locations. This is where we want to do first. This is what we want to do first. And so, we're going we're gonna to find out what is today, uh, the modern day, we want to find out what, where is Shushan? Shushan, the citadel, which is the province, which is in the province of Elam. And I saw in the vision that I was by the river Ulai. Now, I, there's a very cool website that uh, I will leave in the description box, okay? And so I'm going to go ahead and open this up now. And, uh, and, and so we can find out exactly in the geographical location where this is modern day today. Okay. And so let me go ahead and get there and, uh, and bring this up for you. Um, let me see if I can get there. There we go. All right. So let me get there. All right. Now, hopefully you can see this. Okay. And I'm going to blow it up for you. Okay, so you can see it on your screen. Okay, uh, let me let me get that to where it's supposed to be. All right, so this is a very cool website. It has to do with Google Earth. Okay, this is, has to do with Google Earth. Now I'll give you the website in the end in the description box so that you could go ahead. This is it gives you biblical locations um, as far as in real time on Google Earth, and it's very cool. Okay, and so. You just have to put the the part of the Bible where, you know, it speaks about a map or whatnot, and it brings this up for you. And so we're going to go ahead and bring you this. And so here we go. This is Iran. Okay, this is real time. Okay, Iran, Iraq, Syria, Lebanon, Cyprus, and so forth. Turkey, we got Israel over here. We got Jordan. Okay, so this is real time. Now, this is what I'm saying right in the middle here. We're going to drag this up. So now we're going to get zoom in on this. Okay. And so here's Iraq. Here's Iran. Okay. Iraq and Iran. Okay. Up here, we got Turkey over here. We got Armenia, our, uh, Azerbaijan, and so forth. Okay. So in ancient times, Medo Persia. This is the Medes, media. Here's media right now. And so here we go, Elam. Okay, so we know that he's talking, what he just mentioned, Ulai, the Ulai River. Here we have the Ulai River. Now there's another Ulai River with the name of Karun River. Okay, so we're looking at the Ulai River right here on the border. Okay, and so he is in Elam in the citadel uh, of Shusha. Okay, and so we're going to go down a little here. And so the citadel, if we if we open up this here, let me go, let me get that there. Um, here's the citadel in Kusha. 
Okay. Let me let me see if I can get that up. All right. Um, okay. So here we go. Here. Let me see if I can get that up. All right. All right. Ulai Canal. There you go. The Ulai Canal is up here. And then we got Elam right here. So we know exactly where we're speaking about. We are right beside Iraq. Okay. So that is very important. Okay. Very important to know. Okay. So uh, just hold that in your mind. And then now we're going to get back to the scriptures. Okay. So we're going to go back and forth. So hopefully I don't confuse you here. We're going to go back and forth to this map right here. But I just want to point out. Okay, Shushan and uh, Karke River here, Ulai, Ulai, uh, the Ulai and Elam. Okay, so we're at I Iran, Middle Persia, Iran. Okay, I uh, Iran, modern day Iran. Okay, so let me go ahead and get there back to the to the screen now. All right, so here we go. I saw in the vision, and it so happened while I was looking that I was in Shushan, the citadel which is in the province of Elam. And I saw in the vision that I was by the river Ulai. We just looked at it. Then I lifted my eyes, and there standing beside the river was a ram, which had two horns. So we now we understand that the ram with two horns is from Persia, modern-day Iran, modern-day Iran. So the ram with two horns is modern day Iran. And so it says, and the two horns were high, but one was higher than the other, and the higher one came up last. Now I put here, okay, I made a note here. Now we know it was the Medes and the Persians. We know this. So I made a note here. Some say possibly this could be modern day Iran, okay, Kurdistan. Okay, now I'm going to show you a, a, another map here, okay, and uh, let me see which one it was. I believe it was uh, this one here. Yes, this one here. Now, it's Google Earth once again, and like I said, uh, hopefully uh, the, all the audio is coming out fine, but my uh, video is kind of freezing up on me, but that's fine as long as the audio keeps going, because this Google Earth, it's very massive, okay? And so it needs to upload. So let's just give it a second here. And so now we see there's the province. It's coming up now. There's the province of Kurdistan today, modern day, okay? So this is the Kurdistan province, modern day. And so once again, we're in what? We're in Iran, okay? Ancient Persia, okay? And so we know there's there it is right there. This is modern day Kurdistan. Okay. And so it's in the same vicinity, geographical location as Iran. Okay. So they're saying that it these two, okay, so now let's get back to the scripture. It could be Iran, Kurdistan today. Now I'm not saying it's a for sure, but most probably, okay? So anyhow, some say possibly modern-day Iran, Kurdistan. All right. So now we have the geographical location. Now we have the geographical location, okay? And so um, so then, uh, it's, so now we know where this ram is and who it is. It's Persia. It's Iran. Those are the ones that are in power right now, okay? And so they're the two-horned, the two-horned ram. All right, so now we got the geographical location of Daniel 8, all right? And so we go ahead and we go down here. And it says, as I was considering, suddenly a male goat came from the west. Now, let's let's bring that up again, okay? Let's bring this up again. So here is the border of Iraq. Here is the border let me go down a little. Here's the border of Iraq. Here's Turkey. Okay. Now, it says from the west. So on the west, we got north. Okay. Let me bring that down a little bit. We got north. We got south. We got west. And we got east. Okay. So west is this, this side. Okay. It's this way. All right. So you might say, well, it could be Iraq. 
That's where Babylon was. It could be Iraq, or it could be Jordan, or it could be Israel, it could be Syria. Okay, now we got to take this into account. This is why we must go to Ezekiel chapter 38. Okay, and so the final beast comes in Ezekiel chapter 38. This is why they go together. We need to know what location the last final end times beast comes from. That great army, the ten toes mixed with iron and clay, the feet, okay, that the Lord is going to smash, right? So we got to find out the geographical location of who, where in the West, where in the West, okay? So we know it's coming from the West. And so we need to go to Ezekiel 38 first, okay? So once again, let me hover over this. Now, this is where that ram was located, Persia, right there by the, the, the Ulai River, the two-horned ram, okay? And so he says to the West, so now let's get back to Scripture now, all right? Let me, um, let me go ahead and bring that up. All right, so now we got in verse 5, Daniel 8, verse 5, it says, and, I, and as I was considering, a suddenly a male goat, now we have the male goat, came from the West, okay, came from the West. It says, across the surface of the whole earth, without touching the ground, that's hyperbole, he is coming, massively coming. It says, across the surface of the whole earth, without touching the ground, and the goat had a notable horn between his eyes. Remember, the horns are the leaders, are the kings of the nations, the horns, just like the ten horns, okay? So we already established that in the last video. So the horn is a notable leader, the king of that nation, the president, the leader of that nation. So it said the goat had a notable horn between his eyes. Then he came to the ram that had two horns, confronted him, right? which I had seen standing by the river, the Ulai River, it says, and ran at him, and he ran at him with furious power. It says, and I saw him confronting the ram. He was moved with rage against him, attacked the ram, and broke his two horns. The leaders broke them. There was no power in the ram to withstand him. But he cast him down to the ground and trampled him, and there was no one that could deliver the ram from his hand. Now we know today, Iran, 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 yes, and all the conglomerates, all those smaller groups that, that belong to Iran. We know this. The power is with Iran, Persia right now. But this needs to take place in the Middle East first before the Ten Nation Coalition, Gog of Magog, comes into play. And so now we got to identify now, like I said, from Ezekiel 38, where Gog of Magog is. What is the location of this, of this goat, this male goat with one horn that comes from the West? Okay, and so we got to first now go to Ezekiel. Ezekiel 38. Okay, let me get some more water here. So in Ezekiel 38, we got Gog and allies attack Israel, okay? Gog and allies. Now, let's just not make this confusing. This is the last day beast. This is at the middle of the last seven years. This is the great tribulation. This will tell you everything in detail. But we got to know this is the last time. This is the last day uh, in that time period, in that middle of the seven weeks, this is what it's speaking about. This is that last end times beast. This is the feet mixed with iron and clay. These are the ten, ten nations here. And so uh, the conglomerate, the superpower. So establishing that, we got to know where in the West it's coming from. And so this is where I'm going to be bringing you Bible Atlas maps. Now, once again, Bible Atlas maps are very important because those are the most accurate according to biblical Atlas maps. Okay, and so this is what we want to have on hand. 
if we want to identify these ancient locations to modern day today. And so uh, we're also going to be looking at Genesis chapter 10, the table of nations. Most of these, if not all of these names come from Genesis chapter 10. Okay. And so let's go ahead and go to now the word of Ezekiel. Ezekiel 38, Gog, uh, Gog and allies attacked Israel. Now the word of the Lord came to me saying, Son of man, set your face against Gog. Okay, so we know that Gog, by the description, is the Antichrist. Okay, anti-Yeshua Messiah, Antichrist. Okay, we know this is Gog. Now, against, now the word of the Lord came to me saying, Son of man, set your face against Gog of the land of Magog. Okay. So I highlighted this because I've already know, see the map. Okay, we want to see the map now. All right, so we're going to open up the map after I read this, and then we're going to open up those maps. Now the word of the Lord came to me saying, Son of man, set your face against Gog of the land of Magog, the prince of Rosh. So Gog is the prince of Rosh. It's a place, Meshach and Tubal. I'm going to also be... Uh, debunking, if you want to say, the notion that this is Russia. Two separate words. If you know your Hebrew, then Rosh is actually a Hebrew. This is in, written in Hebrew. All the prof, all the uh, Torah, the prophets, original, the Masoretic text, we know it's written in Hebrew. So Rosh is a word in Hebrew. Rus, R-U-S, is Russia. Okay, R-U-S comes from a whole different language, R-U-S. But since there's so many that say it sounds alike, and they come from the upper north, the far north, okay, we're going to be looking at a map, okay, far north, okay, to Israel, far north was Asia Minor. And so we're going to be looking at these maps in just a moment. So let me go ahead and continue here. The Prince of Rosh, Meshach, and Tubal and prophesy against him, and say, Thus says the Lord God, Behold, I am against you, O God, I am against you, Antichrist, the prince of Rosh, Meshach, and Tubal, I am against you. I will turn you around, put hooks into your jaws, and lead you out with all your army, your horses, and your horsemen, all splendidly clothed, a great company with bucklers and shields, all of them handling swords. Persia. This is another indication that this needs to take place in the Middle East first. Persia. We know Persia is Iran. Okay, let me see if that Iran. Okay, we just established that. We know Persia is Iran. No one is arguing against this, but now we know that he's under Gog of Magog. Okay, so we got to establish that truth. This is why the ram and the goat, the vision of the ram and the goat. This is what we're looking for. Iran is going to be stripped of its power because Gog of Magog needs Iran's power to circle, to engulf all the region of the Middle East. It's, it's like a chess piece. He needs that very much. And he will go along with them until Gog of Magog gets his way and establishes his superpower, the Ten Nation Coalition. And so we know right here by Scripture now that Persia now is under, with, under Gog of the land of Magog, Gog of Magog. And so very important, Persia right there. And we know Ethiopia Ethiopia is the Horn of Africa region of East Africa. We have Libya, North Africa, okay, and so on. We got Tagorma, modern-day Turkey, ancient Asia Minor. We're going to be looking at the maps now, okay? And so we got Roche, okay, uh, modern-day Turkey, Asia Minor. And then I'll give you the explanation of Roche in just a second here. So now we got to establish this first. Um, you know, I kind of wanted to go to that now, okay, just to debunk, 
okay debunk this let's see if i can do this okay sometimes i have a hard time with this uh this is new software and i gotta look for that for that note here okay so just give me a second while it pulls it up now we're going to debunk this uh, if it doesn't come up right now then uh please forgive me but let's see if it does okay and just give it a second here because it, uh, sometimes uh, so right now it's not allowing it to go up see this i've been having problems with this software here as far as bringing up notes but you could look it up for yourself i mean really um i have it down here in the notes and it's not pulling it up and so um so i know how i want to show you that roche okay so i do have it in the notes there okay it just i can't pull it up okay so let me see if i can get it high enough to do this all right so we know that roche the word roche in hebrew means head or beginning it is a common Hebrew word that has multiple meanings and applications. In the Bible, in the Hebrew Bible, Rosh is used to uh, is used to refer to the head or leader of a person, nation, or tribe. Uh, for example, okay, so we're going to debunk this in a big way, okay? So because of the reason, if you would look up, and I can't, I'm going to bring it maybe. Um, let me let me go ahead. Let me let me just give me a second here, okay? Give me a second here. And uh, yes, okay. So I do have it over here. All right. So the name Rus, okay? It's not Hebrew, okay? Two different words, two different words, okay? But this is a big, like somebody, like many will believe it's Russia because Russia is big. Now, does Russia play any part? in this last time scenario well maybe but the bible is silent it doesn't say russia so we where the bible is silent we must be silent where the bible is silent we must be silent now we know that russia sides with different various nations and so it's going to play out but we got to keep it israel centric and the players that we mention in prophecy we must leave it there so we don't know who is going to side with who we have a good intention or good feeling. Like another belief is that there's going to be a 200 million man army from China, that that's going to be the last end times beast. China's not even mentioned in the scriptures. It's not mentioned there. So we know this end times beast is not going to be Chinese. They don't have nothing to do with the Temple Mount. We've already went through that in this series. Okay, so Middle Eastern people. Okay, so Islam, Jihad. Okay, so... Uh, oh, Saudi Arabia, we went through this in the last video. If you didn't see the last video, check it out. So there is R-U-S, R-U-S, okay? And so you can look this up on your own time also. Originally, the name Rus referred to the people, regions, and medieval principalities uh, in the 9th, 12th centuries within the territory of the Kivan Rus, Today, its territory is distributed among Belarus, Ukraine, Eastern Poland, and the European section of Russia. The term, there you have it, Rosia. Rosia comes from the Byzantine Greek uh, designation of the Rus. I, I bet you even if you ask... Uh, 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 the the uh, uh ask russia there okay <laughs> i'm sorry putin okay putin i almost forgot his name if you ask him and say well this is this you in scripture uh roche and he'll probably say no that's not me okay that's not us okay so anyhow i'm just making a joke there but it's not it's not too much of a joke but even he will tell you they're not Roche, okay? And so let's let's go ahead and continue now. All right, so it says, Thus says the Lord God, Behold, I am against you, O Gog, I'm against you, Antichrist, the prince of Roche, Meshach, and Tubal. I will turn you around, put hooks into your jaws, and lead you out with all your army, horses and horsemen, all splendidly clothed, a great company with bucklers and shields, all of them handling swords. Persia, Ethiopia, Libya are with them, all of them with shield and helmet. Gomer and all its troops. The house of Tagorma from the far north, 
and all its troops. Many people are with you. Now, this is all it says, and each and every single location is all Islamic today in modern day. So we're going to, first of all, we're going to go to Genesis, and we're going to find out before the maps now where these names came from. Okay, and so we're going to go to Genesis now. These are the table of nations from Genesis chapter 10. Okay, the nations descended from Noah. Now, this is the ge ge genealogy of the sons of Noah, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. When we began this whole video series, we talked about the evil seed line. Okay, we talked about Ham. We talked about this. And so we began this whole series by mentioning Noah and the table of nations. Okay, and so uh, this is where we have all our population today in this entire earth. It began right here. So it says, and, and also Canaan, right? We know Canaan is cursed. Okay, and so it says, and sons were born to them after the flood. Now this is the genealogy of the sons of Noah, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. And sons were born to them after the flood. The sons of Japheth were Gomer, Magog, Madai, Yavan. We're going to be talking about Yavan. Very important. Later on, we're going to be talking about Yavan. Very important. A mistranslation in nearly all of your Bibles. We're going to be talking about this. Yavan, Tubal, Meshach. Tiras, okay, then we have Elisha, Tarshish, Katim, Cyprus, uh, Dodanim, uh, Dodanim, which is actually Rodadim, okay, we're going to be looking at that also, it says from these, the coastland peoples of the Gentiles were separated into their lands, everyone according to his language, according to their families, into their nations, and so we're going to go ahead now, and we're going to open up these Bible Atlas maps, okay? Let me go ahead and take that down. And we're going to go now uh, to, here we go. All right now, so number one, we got the Holman Bible Atlas map. This you can look up, you could go. This is a source. I'll leave it in the context and the comment. They are quite pricey. Uh, but I was just hearing about there's a, a way to go to a library and you could actually probably find these and it probably will cost you nothing, right, to check this out. But you want to go there and check out these maps for yourself. Don't believe me because I could have messed with this and I could have made it look the way it looks, right? So you need to go to the Holman Bible Atlas yourself if you want to cross-reference this, okay? And so, and once again, these are this is the main source you want to go to the Bible Atlas maps. So we got Magog, we got Gomer, we got Tubal, we got Tagorma, we got Meshach. Okay, so I want to open up the Bible again here. All right, so let me open up the Bible again here. And because uh, this is where it counts the most. So we got Tubal, Meshach, Magog, we got Gomer. Okay, so we got all these established on the biblical map, on the Bible Atlas map. Okay, so let me open it back up. So we got Magog, Gomer, Tubal, Tagorma. I've seen uh, maps that have been messed with that they'll have Magog like way up here and Gomer like over here and Meshach like over here. Don't believe them. And I got more cross references for you. It's not just, remember, we need two to three witnesses, okay, to back up an idea or a suggestion. And so we got the next, the IVP Atlas of Bible History. The IVP Atlas of Bible History. Very highly regarded also, okay? And so we got, once again, Meshach, Magog, Tubal, Tagorma. Okay, so there you have it. Okay, and so next, we have the New Moody Atlas of the Bible. The New Moody also very highly regarded. Many scholars go to these atlases of the Bible. So we got Meshach, Magog, Gomer, Tubal, Tagorma, all in what area? 
Geographic location. We establish it here. Asia Minor. Modern day Turkey. There's no if, ands, or buts. This is where the last end time beast is coming from. Gog of Magog. Okay, and so there we establish this. We know this is Katim out here, Cyprus right here. And so let me go ahead and open up one more. And now this, I don't have an actual, but it is a biblical atlas map. You can look under uh, all those I just mentioned. Okay, and we got Rodanim here. On this little island here, Rodanim, okay, we got Tiras, Tiras up here, upper left, Tiras. It's cut off there. I'm sorry, it's cut off there. And we got Lud and we got Yavon. Focus in on Yavon, okay, focus in on Yavon because that's going to make a big difference. And I'm going to be bringing this map back up, okay, concerning Yavon, okay, and so. There you have it there, Meshach, Magog, Tubal, Tagorma. And remember, this is right borderline of Iran, borderline to the west, to the west, okay? So this is why we're establishing these maps here. So keep in mind Rodanim and Yavan and Tiras. So let's go ahead and we find Tiras also located here. Um, let me go ahead and open it. There it is there, Tiras, Tiras, okay? So we got the locations now on the Bible Atlas maps, okay? Yavon, there's Yavon, very important, Yavon. And Dodanim, uh, if you want to cross-reference these, uh, which we'll be doing, um, we, we'll be doing this in just, um, I'm, I'm not sure if I want to do it now, Um but let's we'll we'll get there. When I go to Yavon, we're going to be going to the interlinear interlinear Bible. So we wanted to bring up where these names came from and these locations. And this is they come from the Table of the Nations of Noah. And so this is why we have what we have Asia Minor. Okay. So let's go ahead now and go back to Ezekiel. All right. So here we go. It says, "Now the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Son of man, set your Set your face against Gog of the land of Magog, Asia Minor, the prince of Rosh, Meshach, and Tubal, Asia Minor, and prophesy against him and say, Thus the Lord God, behold, I am against you, O Gog, Antichrist. You are the prince of Rosh, Meshach, and Tubal. I'm against you. I will turn you around, put hooks into your jaws, and lead you out. So who is leading them out? We have to understand this is the Lord for his glory, for his name's sake. With all your army, horses and horsemen, all splendidly clothed, a great company with bucklers and shields, all of them handling swords, Persia, Ethiopia, and Libya are with them. All of them with shield and helmet. Gomer and all its troops, the house of Dagorma from the far north. From the far north. Now, once again, they're right off the Black Sea. And beyond the Black Sea, we got Russia up there, okay? But we know the location now. We just debunked Russia, okay? Uh, no no pun intended, Vladimir Putin, okay? So, uh, from the far north and all its troops, many people are with you, okay? So, we're going to we'll go ahead and read this in the context now. It says, prepare yourself and be ready and all your companies that are gathered about you and be a guard for them. After many days, you will be visited. The Lord tells him, after many days, you will be visited. In the latter years, you will come up into the land of those who brought back from the sword of those. Uh, the, I'm sorry. In the latter years, you will come up into the land of those brought back from the sword and gathered from many people on the mountains of Israel, which had long been desolate, the Aliyah. They were brought out of the nations, Aliyah, and now all of them dwell safely. You will ascend, coming like a storm, covering the land like a cloud, you and all your troops, and many people with you. Thus says the Lord God, on that day it shall come to pass that thoughts, will arise in your mind. So the Lord's going to put thoughts in his mind and you will make an evil plan. 
you will say, I will go up against a land of unwalled villages. I will go to a peaceful people who dwell safely, all of them dwelling without walls and having neither bars nor gates. And so I made a, a, a note here. Ezekiel 28, 26, it says, and there will be, and there they will dwell securely, build houses and plant vineyards. They will dwell securely when I execute judgments against all those around them who treat them with contempt. Then they will know that I am the Lord, their God. Hallelujah. Amen. And so we're going to go ahead because this excites me. Because we know that he's going to act against Gog of Magog for a reason. Number one, to show Israel. Number one, to show Israel that they have a Savior. And he is Yeshua HaMashiach. He is Yahweh Elohim. And he's going to save them. He's going to do a mighty thing. He's going to bring up this army from the north. And then when they see all, all is lost, he's going to rescue them in Ezekiel chapter 39. And he's going to glorify his name for his name's sake, not because of us, nothing that we can do, but to establish his ways and understand that he rules and reigns and he will rule and reign from Israel from Jerusalem and sit on the throne of David. Amen. And so he's going to conquer all these nations that are against Israel today, Gog of Magog, surrounded by enemies. But remember, we must look to the east. We must be watchmen. This is why we are saying all these things. This is why I'm bringing you this so that we know what to look for. Amen. And so there is another, there is a, a scripture here that coincides with this scripture. And so now we go back. It says, you will say, I will go up against a land of unwalled villages. He tells him what to say. He tells him what he's thinking. I will go to a peaceful people who dwell safely. Israel, Jerusalem. All of them dwelling without walls and having neither bars nor gates. Deceived for the most part. Shalom, right? This is also a warning to Israel. Don't let your guard down. This is coming. This is spoken by the prophets of Yahweh Elohim, Yeshua. He spoke through his prophets concerning this end times before his glorious return. And so we go on and we read what is going to happen in detail. Verse 12, to take plunder and to take booty, to stretch out your hand against the waste places that are again inhabited. And so that we know that this hasn't happened yet. This has not happened yet. What happened in Gaza, what's going on in Gaza was just a group. Hamas is just a group under Iran. Just one group. Okay, so we know what needs to take place. So that was an eye-opener for sure. It was a wake-up call for sure. To take plunder and to take booty, to stretch out your hand against the waste places that are again inhabited, and against a people gathered from the nations, who have acquired livestock and goods, who dwell in the midst of the land, Sheba, Dedan, the merchants of Tarshish, and all their young lions will say to you, Have you come to take plunder? Have you gathered your army to take booty, to carry away silver and gold, to take away livestock and goods? To take great plunder, this is the M.O. of Islam, of ISIS. This is their M.O. This is what they've been doing ever since the inception of Muhammad. So once again, in verse 14, it says, Therefore, son of man, prophesy and say to God, say to the Antichrist, says, Thus says the Lord, the Lord God, the Lord Yahweh Elohim, On that day when my people Israel dwell safely, will you not know it? says, then you will come from the place out of the far north, you and your many peoples with you, all of them riding on horses, a great company and a mighty army. You will come up against my people, Israel, like a cloud to cover the land. They will take it. It will be in the latter days that I will bring you against my land. So This, this right here, very important. I want to highlight this. Okay. Um, 
Let me go ahead and get that highlighted there. So that the nations may know me when I am hallowed in you. So we got the reason he's going to allow this to happen before his glorious return. Once again, it says, you will come up against my people, Israel, like a cloud to cover the land. It will be in the latter days that I will bring you against my land so that the nations may know me when I am hallowed in you. This is his reason. He wants to be hallowed. He wants to be recognized. He wants his ways to be established. He wants complete repentance. He wants all the nations to know. All the nations to know, including Israel, that he is in charge. Amen? It says, O oh Gog, O oh Antichrist, before their very eyes. So once again, you will come against my people, Israel, like a cloud to cover the land. It will be in the latter days that I will bring you against my land so that the nations may know me when I am hallowed in you. Amen. O oh God, right before their eyes. Thus says the Lord God, are you of he, the Antichrist, are you of he? Of whom, anti, are you a he, anti Yeshua, Messiah, Christ, little horn, if you want to say, are you he of whom I have spoken in former days by my servants, the prophets of Israel? It's all written. It's all written. Joel, Zephaniah, Zechariah, Daniel. It's all written by his prophets, Jeremiah. This is what he's saying here. Are you of he of whom I have spoken in former days? Isaiah, all of the prophets speak about this apocalyptic gospel, that this must take place. Enoch also talks about it. All these jubilees, they talk about it also. It says, are you of he of whom I have spoken in the former days by my servants, the prophets of Israel? who prophesied for years in those days that I would bring you against them. We must take heed of the prophets and what they spoke concerning these last days, because he is coming soon. And we must prepare spiritually, number one, spiritually. For all nations are spiritually sick and need a Savior. Amen. And his name is Yeshua HaMashiach. Yahweh Elohim. Amen. And so I will continue this, Ezekiel 38. We, we must establish this. It says judgment on Gog. So this is his judgment against Gog. It says, and it will come to pass at the same time when Gog, the Antichrist, comes against the land of Israel, says the Lord God, that my fury will show in my face. For in my jealousy and in the fire of my wrath, I have spoken. Surely in that day, there shall be a great earthquake in the land of Israel. He's going to come to the, to the rescue. So that the fish of the sea, the birds of the heavens, the beasts of the field, all creeping things that creep on the earth, and all men who are on the face of the earth shall shake at my presence. All men shall shake at his presence. This is going to affect the whole world. The mountains shall be thrown down, the steep places shall fall, and every wall shall fall to the ground. I will call for a sword against Gog throughout all my mountains. I love how he puts my mountains. This whole earth is his. Amen? And these are his mountains. Israel is his and his only. Jerusalem is his and his only. That is his temple mount and his temple mount only. It says, it says, once again, I will call for a sword against the Antichrist through all my mountains, says the Lord God. Every man's sword will be against his brother, and I will bring him to judgment with pestilence and bloodshed. I will rain down on him, on his troops, and on the many peoples who are with him that last end times beast, flooding rain, great hailstones, fire and brimstone. Verse 23, thus I will magnify myself, he says, and sanctify 
himself, and I will be known in the eyes of many nations. Then they shall know that he is the Lord. Then they shall know that I am the Lord. And so this is the reason once again. So he magnifies himself. He will magnify his holy ways, his laws, for us trespassing his laws. And so he will establish himself on in Jerusalem on the throne of David. And his laws will go forth from Zion. And we'll go ahead and pick it up also once again. We'll be picking up also in 39. But once again, let's go ahead and get back to Daniel now. All right, so let me go back here. So that was Daniel. That was Ezekiel 38. So we established where Rosh, Meshach, Tubal by the biblical atlas maps. Okay, and what the meaning of Rosh is and not Rus, R-U-S. It's not even heard of just because it sounds the same. So we establish where the location is. Now we can go back to Daniel. All right, so here we go. Now we know we established the vision of the ram and goat. In the third year of the, the reign of King Belshazzar, a vision appeared to me, uh, Daniel, after the one that appeared to me the first time. I saw in the vision, and and so it and and it so happened while I was looking that I was in Shushan, the citadel, which is in the province of Elam. And I saw in that vision that I was by the river Ulai. Then I lifted my eyes and saw, and there standing beside the river was a ram which had two horns, and the two horns were high, but one was higher than the other. Um, also, let me look at that that map again. And let me just establish this. Um, we know we by the map we looked at up here is where the Kurdistan, the Kurd provinces up here. And so just to mention one was higher than the other. It could possibly be, okay, possibly be. I'm not saying for sure, but it could possibly be that he was in the province of Elam here, which is in Iran, and upper higher than him is the Kurds up here higher okay I'm just saying okay so I'm just I'm just saying it's a probability so something to check out okay so let's go ahead and get back now it says then I lifted my eyes and saw that there standing beside the river was a ram which had two horns and the two horns were high but one was higher than the other and the higher one came up last I saw the ram pushing westward, northward, and southward, so that no animal could withstand him, nor was there any that could deliver from his hand. But he did according to his will and became great. Now we know Iran took a massive blow, but there's always somebody to replace uh, what happened to the king there, okay, the president. So we know that that happened for a reason, but there's always somebody that's going to replace them. They're still in power. Look what they're doing, okay? So we're going to be showing you other, other, um, uh, just other groups and other websites that you can go to to see the power that Iran has right now, okay? So, so it says, and I, and as I was considering, suddenly a male goat came from the west across the whole surface of the earth without touching the ground, and the goat. So once again, this right here, this male goat is not the last end times beast yet. It's not the ten toes. It's not the ten nations yet. He must take the power from Persia, from Iran. Okay. And so it says across the surface of the whole earth without touching the ground. And the goat had a notable horn between his eyes. Then he came to the ram that had two horns, which I had seen standing beside the river and ran at him with furious power. And I saw him confronting the ram. He was moved with rage against him, attacked the ram. And broke his two horns. There was no power in the ram. There was no power in Iran anymore to withstand him. But he cast him down to the ground and trampled him. And there was no one that could deliver the ram from his hand. Therefore, the male, the male goat grew very great. Okay, very great. But when he became strong, the large horn was broken. Now, very important to notify this. To, to uh, address this, that Recep type, type Erdogan 
He has got the ball rolling. In other words, he is gaining momentum. This is why we got to watch Erdogan because he is still in power of Turkey. Gog of Magog, Asia Minor. So he's making his moves. He's like a chess piece. He's, he's, he's trying to gain land to revive the Ottoman Empire. This is his mindset. This is his mindset. Okay. This is, he doesn't, he doesn't hold it back from anybody. He says it out loud. If you, if you know, if you know what's been going on, he doesn't hold back anything. And he did. He loves what Hamas did. He does. Okay. And so he has that same mentality. So we cannot uh, underestimate Recep, okay? But he is not this large horn because that large horn is going to be broken. That king of that nation, okay? So it says, but when he came, became strong, the large horn was broken. And in place of it, four notable ones came up. So in place of it, he was very great. In place of those four, okay, he has left. In other words, most likely he has left his empowerment to for other nations, just in case something might happen to him. Just in case something might happen to him. Now, can we say beyond a shadow of a doubt, at this moment, we're talking about the end here. We're talking about it's growing time to the end. Can we say for certain it is Recep Tayyip Erdogan? Well, he's a major leader and he's doing a lot of things in the Middle East. And he has that mindset that he wants to revive the, the Ottoman Empire. Okay? He wants to become the caliphate. Okay? So, can we say for sure? We can say for sure that this king, whoever he is, this leader, this president of this nation, he gets broken. So, it could possibly be at this time in history, in our future, that this is him. Okay? And then... That person, whoever it is, left four notable ones, four nations, notable nations. He left them in charge, in other words, between four. Okay, so here we have it here. And out of one of them came a little horn. So out of the four, the four kings, this is another thing we got to look forward to. This all must take place in the Middle East before the end comes. So many things have to take place. And so out of one of them came a little horn, came the Antichrist, which grew exceedingly great towards the south, toward the east, and toward the glorious land of Israel. And it grew up, and it grew up to the host of heaven, and it cast down some of the host and some of the stars to the ground and trampled them. So we know the beast is given authority by Hasatan, right? And so this possibly could be this verse 10. It, it, it actually, it doesn't confuse me because I know it's a spiritual warfare. It's a spiritual battle. It's not just going to be a regular, it's going to be human beings. It's going to be a militant army, but we know it has to do with spiritual because we know Hasatan is cast from heaven down to the ground. Okay, and all his angels with them. We're going to be reading that scripture now in Revelation. Now, this is the Antichrist reaching up into heaven. And it's, there's a war going on here, a heavenly war. In verse 10, it says, and it grew up. What grew up? The little horn, the Antichrist, which is, I believe, possessed or is going to be given the empowerment by Hasatan himself. And so it grew up to the host of heaven, the host, the angels, the angelic host, and cast down some of the host and some of the stars to the ground and trampled them. Now, could this possibly be at this moment when he reaches up and goes up, we know the, the, the enemy, he has, um, he has the right to go to and fro to heaven and back, him and his angels. There's warfare going on in the heavens. He has that passageway up into the heavens. So we're going to read right now. Could this possibly be when they attack and then when Michael gets them and throws them down finally? And so it could possibly be. So we're going to go to Revelation. And we're going to read what happens. So this could possibly be when. He does this. The Antichrist reaches up into the heaven and says, I'm going to fight you. I'm going to war against you. And so we know in Revelation chapter 12, 
verses 7, uh, 7 through 12. It says, uh, Satan thrown out of heaven and war broke out in heaven. So this could possibly be that he went up. He says, I'm going to fight against you. There is a spiritual warfare going to be happening. We read it in scripture. It says, and war broke out in heaven. At that time, it says, Michael and his angels fought with the dragon. And the dragon and his angels fought, but they did not prevail, nor was a place found for them in heaven any longer. So the great dragon was cast out. That serpent of old called the devil and Satan, Hasatan, who deceives the whole world. He was cast down to the earth and his angels were cast out with him. So we know that they have passage back and forth. At this moment, he goes up, possibly, as we're reading in Daniel right now, he goes up and he starts fighting. They start fighting, warring against uh, uh, Michael and the angels and the messengers. But they don't win, right? Of course not. We read it in scripture. It says, then, verse 10, it says, Then I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now salvation and strength and the kingdom of our Elohim and the power of his Messiah has come. For the accuser of our brethren who accused them before Elohim day and night has been cast down. And they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony. And they did not love their lives to death. Therefore rejoice, O heavens, heavens, and you who dwell in the heavens. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and the sea. For the devil has come down to you having great wrath, because he knows that he has a short time. I say an hour, three and a half, three and a half years. Because this is where I believe it happens. At the three and a half mark for three and a half years. And then the Lord comes and rescues and puts Satan away for a thousand years and all the demonic beings, all the unclean spirits. Amen. And so let's go back now to Daniel. So could, could this possibly be that moment? Okay. Can this possibly be so? It says, and he grew up to the host of heaven and cast down some of the host and some of the stars to the ground and trampled them. He even exalted himself as high as the prince of the host, right? Against Yeshua himself. And by him, the daily sacrifices were taken away and the place of his sanctuary was cast down. And so we know that this is the sanctuary that will be what? It will be desecrated. Okay, and so because of what? Because of transgression, an army was given over to the horn to oppose the daily sacrifice, and he cast truth down to the ground, the Torah, the truth. He did all this and prospered, the Antichrist. And so once again, could this possibly be when the devil is cast down to the earth for a short time, three and a half years, of when they entered the sanctuary, the temple here on this earth, build, built by human hands. This temple they are waiting for, the third temple that's going to be on this earth. We know it's going to be desolated by scriptures. So it says he even exalted himself as high as the prince of the host, Yeshua. And by him the daily sacrifices. So once again, that temple needs to be standing at this moment. And were taken away, and the place of his sanctuary was cast down. Because of transgression, an army was given over to the horn. By who? By the Lord. We just read that in Ezekiel chapter 38. To oppose the daily sacrifices. And he cast truth down to the ground. He did all this and prospered Okay, for a short time. Then I heard a holy one speaking, and another holy one uh, said to that certain one who was speaking, How long would the vision be concerning the daily sacrifices and the transgression of desolation, the giving of both the sanctuary and the host to be trampled underfoot? Let me open this note here. Let me see what I had put here. Ezekiel 38, yes. Okay. So, and he said to me, for 2,300 days, 
then the sanctuary shall be cleansed. So we know when the sanctuary is cleansed, this is when the Lord returns and establishes his sanctuary built by his hands and it will be cleansed. Amen. Of course. And so we're going to open this up. So we know we're going to be reading to Ezekiel 39. Okay. Ezekiel 39. And we'll get back to that as we, we, we continue here. So then the sanctuary shall, well, well, you know what? Let's go there now. Ezekiel 39. And then we'll continue as Gabriel will interpret the vision. This is what I love about Daniel. There's always an interpretation. Okay. And it's right in the scriptures. Okay. And so let's go ahead and go to Ezekiel 39. Uh, I know I, I brought a lot of doom and gloom. Okay. But we're going to be bringing some exciting news here. Okay. At Ezekiel 39. All right. So let's get there. And so here we go, Ezekiel 39. And then if you if you really if you don't know and you want it, if you're really interested, from Ezekiel 39, just go to 40, 40 through 48. In detail, it talks about the millennial kingdom here on this earth. I get excited because it does. It's amazing. It shows 38. All this happens with Gog and Magog, right? They come down, they enter in Jerusalem, right? All this doom and gloom, right? It needs to happen before it comes to pass. And then we go to 39 when the Lord saves the day and he rescues us from Gog, the armies, and delivers Israel. Amen. And then we enter into his kingdom. It's in chronological order in chapter 40 through 48. It's just amazing. Okay. And so we'll go ahead now. Gog, Gog's armies destroyed. It says, and you, son of man, prophesy against God, against the Antichrist, and say, thus says the Lord God, behold, I am against you, O Gog, the prince of Rosh, Meshach, and Tubal, and I will turn you around and lead you on. So he's, he's in control. Amen. He says, I'm going to turn you around and lead you on, bringing you up from the far north. He says, I'm going to bring you up and I'm going to bring you against the mountains of Israel. Then I will knock the bow. I love this part right here. Right here. I just got to highlight that. Then I will knock the bow out of your left hand and cause the arrows to fall out of your right hand. You shall fall upon the mountains, Israel, you and all your troops and the people who are with you. I will give you to the birds of prey of every sort and to the beasts of the field to be devoured. You shall fall on the open field, for I have spoken, says the Lord God, and I will send fire on Magog and on those who live in security in the coastlands. Then they shall know that I am the Lord, he says. So I will make my holy name known. Once again, what's the reason for this? So I will make my holy name known in the midst of my people, Israel. Okay. It says, and I will not let them once again. This is also a chastising against Israel at the same time. And we got to understand this as truth. We know Israel is not perfect. No nation is perfect. We all fall short. But this will be a chastising against Israel. So I will make my holy name known in the midst of my people Israel. And I will not let them profane my holy name anymore. No more. It's his holy land. And he's going to make it holy. All of it. And so this is what he seeks. He seeks repentance. He, spe he seeks uh, complete repentance. In the whole entire land of Israel. Because his name is being profaned in many ways there. We have to understand this. This is just being real and true. And all the surrounding nations, of course. Every nation. Every knee will bow. Every tongue will confess. But this is his nation. And so he says, So I will make my holy name known in the midst of my people Israel. And I will not let them profane my holy name anymore. Then the nations, once again, why? Then the nations shall know that I am the Lord of Israel. I'm going to go ahead and highlight that. Then the nations shall know that I am the Lord, the Holy One in Israel. Surely it is coming, and it shall be done, says the Lord God. 
This is the day of which I have spoken. We cannot change it. We cannot change this. It has been prophesied. It's going to come to pass. We must prepare. Then those who dwell in the cities of Israel will go out and set on fire and burn the weapons, both the shields and bucklers. So he saves them. He chastises them. No longer they're going to profane his holy name. No one in Israel. But then, but then he empowers Israel. He empowers Israel. And he fights for them, for his name's sake. Then those who dwell in the cities of Israel will go out and set on fire and burn the weapons, both the shields and bucklers. Clean up time. Clean up time. The bows and the arrows, the javelins and the spears. And they will make fires with them for seven years. No more weapons of destruction. All those weapons of destruction that you see all the armies having now. No more. No more war. No more innocent lives being taken. Senseless wars. No more. No more. Excuse me. Then they will not take wood. Then they will not take wood from the field, nor cut down any from the forest, because they will make fires with the weapons. So many show off their weapons, right? Who has the bigger bomb? So many show off their weapons, right? No more. No more. North Korea, Russia, all that. No more. China. Then those who dwell in the cities of Israel will go out and set on fire and burn the weapons, both the shields and bucklers, the bows and arrows. Of course, we need weapons to defend. I understand that, fully understand. This is why they're called Israel Defense Force. They defend themselves. The bows and the arrows, javelins and spears, and they will make fires with them for seven years. So others, they take, they take abuse. They, they take that for granted, the weapons, other nations. It matters what hands there are in, right? United States also defense, defense. They will not take wood from the field nor cut down any from the forest because they will make fires with the weapons and they will plunder those who plundered them and pillage those who pillage them, says the Lord God. This is when he gives them vengeance. He says, okay, go ahead now. Go ahead now. Because they will have taken much from Israel. We've already seen that in the Middle East, what they did. No more of that. No more of that. And this is for good here. This is for good. The burial of Gog. It will come to pass in that day that I will give Gog a burial place there in Israel. The valley of those who pass by the east of the sea. And it will obstruct travelers. Because there they will bury Gog and all his multitude. Therefore, they will call it the Valley of Haman Gog for seven months. This is literal. For seven months, the house of Israel will be burying them in order to cleanse the land, clean up time. Indeed, all the people of the land will be burying and they will gain renown for it on the day that I am glorified, says the Lord. They will set apart man regularly employed with the help of a search party, to pass through the land and bury those bodies remaining on the ground in order to cleanse it. At the end of the seven months, they will make a search. The search party will pass through the land, and when anyone sees a man's bone, he shall set up a marker by it. Till the barriers have buried it in the valley of Haman Gog, the name of the city will also be Hamona. Thus they shall cleanse the land. 
then a triumphant festival. Amen. And as for you, son of man, thus says the Lord God, speak to every sort of bird and to every beast of the field. Birds have a lot to do with this time. And every beast, every animal, very important, the animal kingdom. Very important, the animal kingdom. Assemble yourselves and come. Gather together from all sides to my sacrificial meal, which I am sacrificing for you. This is a banquet for the animals. A great sacrificial meal on the mountains of Israel, that you may eat flesh and drink blood. You shall eat the flesh of the mighty, the leaders of those nations. Drink the blood of the princes of the earth, of rams and lambs, of goats and bulls, because they didn't want to repent. All of them, fatlings of Bashan, remember it's always the leaders that are in lead, that lead the people into destruction. The innocent ones at the very bottom are the ones that are affected. The innocent people, the poor, the needy, those are the ones that are affected by war. And who's going to help them? Who, does it, who helps them? They're the ones that get the short end of the stick every time. Not the higher-ups. They're in their, their little uh, safe zones, right? So easy for them. But they're going to pay. They're going to pay. You shall, you shall eat the flesh of the mighty, drink the blood of the princes of the earth, of rams and lambs, of goats and bulls, all of them fatlings of Bashan. You shall eat fat till you are full and drink blood till you are drunk. At my sacrificial meal, which I am sacrificing for you, says the Lord. You shall be filled at my table, says the Lord, with horses and riders, with mighty men, and with all the men of war, says the Lord God. The enemies. Israel restored to the land. This is hallelujah, right? There is hope. This is forever. Israel restored to the land. I will set my glory among the nations. All the nations shall see my judgment, which I have executed, and my hand, which I have laid on them. So the house of Israel shall know that I am the Lord their God from that day forward. The Gentiles shall know that the house of Israel went into captivity for their iniquity. Because they were unfaithful to me, therefore I hid my face from them. Very important to know. So the house of Israel shall know that I am the Lord their God from that day forward. The Gentiles shall know that the house of Israel went into captivity for their iniquity. Because they were unfaithful to me, therefore I hid my face from them. I gave them into the land of the hand of their enemies. And they all fell by the sword. According to their uncleanness and according to their transgressions, I have dealt with them and hidden my face from them. Therefore, thus says the Lord God, now I will bring back the captive of captives of Jacob. The greatest alia ever, the gathering by the Lord himself. From all those places they will be taken captive at the middle of the last seven years. Three and a half years, he will bring them back from their captivity. All those, for what? For their iniquity, for their transgressions. It says, therefore, thus says the Lord God, now I will bring back the captives of Jacob. And have mercy on the whole house of Israel. On the whole house of Israel. Amen. It says, and I will be jealous for my holy name. For his name's sake. I will be jealous for my holy name. After they have borne their shame. And all their unfaithfulness. In which they were unfaithful to me. When they dwelt safely in their own land. And no one made them afraid. When I have brought them back from the peoples and gathered them out of their enemies' lands, 
and I am hallowed in them in the sight of many nations. Then they shall know that I am the Lord their God, who sent them into captivity among the nations, but also brought them back to their land and left none of them captive any longer. And I will not hide my face from them any more, for I shall have poured out my spirit on the house of Israel, says the Lord God. Atonement, day of atonement, Israel's redemption. This must take place before the Lord's glorious return. And so we read this in the context. We must not shy away from what he has spoke through his prophets concerning he always wants what? Obedience. Obedience. As we read right here, it's because of their disobedience. It's been going on since the beginning. Adam and Eve, disobedience, 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 chastising, correcting. It's because he wants our obedience. He wants us to come to complete repentance. This is what the Torah is all about from beginning to end. And there is nothing wrong with his commandments. They are beautiful. They are wonderful to be obeyed. They're not too burdensome. Yeshua HaMashiach showed us himself how to live his commandments in love, in peace, in rejoicing. What to stay away from, the do's and don'ts in the Torah. His beautiful feast days that all have to do with his first and second coming. They have to do with the second coming. The fall feasts that are coming up in the fall have to do with his glorious return. Have to do with this, what we are reading right now. This is what the fall feasts have to do with. The day of trumpets. The day of trumpets. Yom Kippur, Israel's redemption, the atonement, and then tabernacling with them in his millennial kingdom on this earth, Sukkot. This is what the fall feasts are about. And the first spring feast already came to pass. When he died for our sins, he is the Lamb of God that died for our sins. He is the unleavened bread because he is the bread of life, Yeshua, but he died unleavened. Sin represents leaven. And then we had first fruits of the resurrection, making it possible for us to be forgiven of trespassing his commandments and ways. So that we can be obedient to them. So we can imitate Christ, Yeshua, and walk in his statutes and his commandments and his ways. Amen. And so we go ahead and get back now. This goes out to Israel and all the surrounding nations. Amen. And so let's go ahead now and we'll go back to Daniel. And we'll finish. And now we're going to go to the interpretation. Uh, Gabriel's interpretation uh, interprets. Uh, Gabriel interprets the vision. Okay. So once again, Gabriel interprets, interprets uh, the vision. So we always have a, an interpretation. This is why, once again, I say that I, I, I really like the book of Daniel. I love the book of Daniel because Gabriel, the angel Gabriel, always gives us the interpretation. And so when angel Gabriel speaks, he's, be, he's speaking, of course, on behalf of the Lord. So we got to take every word uh, exactly what he says. Okay, And so it is the very best, number one, 100% resource we have okay is is the word of god and he gives us the interpretation of scripture okay so here's the the most best resource or source you can go to right uh let let scripture interpret scripture and so gabriel gabriel interprets the vision then it happened when i daniel has seen the vision and was seeking the meaning that suddenly there stood before me one having the appearance of a man and I heard a man's voice between the banks of the Ulai, once again, the Ulai, who called and said, Gabriel, make this man understand the vision. So he came near where I stood. And when he came, I was afraid and fell on my face. But he said to me, understand, son of man, that the vision refers to the time of the end. Very important, because many say this is history. It happened already. Many say this, and there's a large group that says, no, this happened already. Ezekiel 38 happened already. 
Ezekiel 39 happened already. They always want to put it in the past. So we've got to confront the truth of what he speaks through his prophets. And so once again, we got to take it at face value of who is speaking here. Angel Gabriel. Messenger Gabriel. It says, understand, son of man, that this vision refers to the time of the end. The time that has been decreed. In Daniel chapter 9, verse 24, as we're going to be looking at, says, Now as he was speaking with me, I was in a deep sleep with my face to the ground. But he touched me and stood me upright. And he said, Look, I am making known to you what shall happen in the latter time of the indignation. For at the appointed time, the end shall be. Once again, he says it not once. But again, he says, at the end shall be. And so I put here, um, let me see if that note will open up now. Okay, let me go a little higher on this. And let me open it up now. At the appointed time. So we know the prophecy, the 70 weeks prophecy, Daniel chapter 9, 24. 70 weeks, 490 years are determined for your people and for your holy city. So we're waiting for the final seven years. Okay. And so we went through this in our last video. It says to finish the transgression, to make an end of sins. End. No more sins. That's it. Hasatan done away with. The, un, the unclean spirits, the demonic, done away with. To put the end of sins. To make an end of sins. To make reconciliation for the iniquity. Reconciliation. Day of atonement. Atoning for it. As we're reading in Ezekiel 39. The day of atonement. To bring in everlasting righteousness. Forever. The kingdom. The laws will go forth from Zion. Every knee will bow. Every tongue will confess. All the nations that survive will must comply. They will must. They must comply with his laws and his ways. No more. There will be decisions to be made in Zechariah chapter 14 if they want to go up to worship the king on his holy mountain at Sukkot. There will be, there will still be survivors. And they got the option. But if they choose not to, like many choose not to worship on his feast days, many do not believe in his feast days. Well, they're going to have to comply. Zechariah chapter 14. Or else no rain will fall on them. He's not going to kill them. But no rain, he'll make them suffer. So that's that's Zechariah chapter 14. Maybe someday we'll get to that chapter, okay, in the future. So it says to make reconciliation for iniquity, to bring in everlasting righteousness, to seal up the vision and prophecy. That's it, no more. Seal it up. That's it. Prophecy all is going to be, it's going to come to pass. And to anoint the most holy, Yeshua HaMashiach, Yahweh Elohim. And his blessed kingdom. Amen. And so the kingdom. And so we're going to go ahead now. And uh, at that point in time. So it says for at the appointed time. The end shall be. The ram which you saw having the two horns. They are the kings of Media and Persia. So he gives us the explanation. It's Iran. Okay. Possibly the Kurds in Iran. Okay. Today. Modern day. Verse 21, and the male goat is the kingdom of Greece. So now I'm going to take you to this Greece right here, okay? And so best place to look is your interlinear Bible. This is all written in Hebrew. And so I, I've, I've showed those uh, in the past how to use this. So you can possibly, you, it just, you just go, you press 21, just the verse that you want to interlinear. You want to know what it says in the Hebrew. So this is very important because some may say, well, this could be a, a revived Roman Empire. This could be Europe, which is close to what? Uh, uh, Rome, right? Rome, Europe, right? They'll make this, but they'll go by the English here. And so we're going to open up in the interlinear. It says, and the male goat is the kingdom of Greece. Okay, so we're going to open up the interlinear. And we're going to show you how the name is Yavon. Yavon. Okay, and so I put here a note here. 
Let me go ahead and open that up. Um, Yawan, it's actually Yawan. It's a W. Remember, the V came in in modern Hebrew. The V came in later in modern Hebrew. And the J was never a J, okay, in these times of the Masoretic text. It was always a Y. So it's actually Yawan, Yawan, Yavan, okay? And so we're going to go ahead and open this up now in the interlinear and show you. And so here we have it. And then we're going to go ahead and go to the interlinear. INT, okay, you just seen what I did. You can replay this on another time. You can just go INT, okay, which will take you to the interlinear. And so here you have it here, okay. This is the original manuscripts, okay, in the Hebrew. So there you have the Hebrew here. So it says, it says the male, it says, and the male and the and the goat, the male goat of the kingdom of Greece, right? Well, you look at this word Greece in the Hebrew, it's Yavan. It's Yavan. Okay. And there you have it right there. You see Yavan, the V came in later. Okay. So it's Yavan. So why is this important? We're going to be going back to the map right now. Okay. Now we're going to open up this map and show you. Yavan. There it is there. So it points to not Greece as we know Greece today, Greece, right? It's not going to come from Greece or Europe or the revived Roman Empire. This is the west side of the coastland of Asia Minor today, which is uh, uh, Gog of Magog, right? Asia Minor, today Turkey, Turkey. So it's pointing to Yavon right there, Turkey. So this scripture in the context of the Hebrew Bible, there is a mistranslation here in the English. Okay, so let's go back there now. So now we have Greece right here. It makes a big difference, right? Because many will say, oh, the kingdom of Greece today, modern day Greece, right there in Greece. No, it's Yawan. So the big difference is it's Asia Minor. It's Turkey, which I mean, there's un 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 undeniably... Now with all the biblical maps that we showed you, Gog of Magog, it is Asia Minor, it is Turkey. But if you want more and you want to use this reference saying that it's Europe or that it's a revived Roman Empire, then guess what? It is Yavon. And this should be fixed that way, Yavon. So this will be in your footnotes of a lot of your translations, okay? So that is very important, okay? So now we know how to read uh, this uh, this interlinear Bible, okay? So let's go back now. And we'll get back to scriptures here. So this might go over two hours, um, but not hopefully not too much. Okay, so almost done here. So let's go back again. And so remember, you just hit this. I'll leave the software in the description box, and you can work it yourself. It's pretty cool. All right. So, so and the male goat is the kingdom of Yavon. Okay, which is what Asia Minor today, modern day Turkey. Okay, and so says the large horn that is between its eyes is the first king. So it gives us the breakdown. The large horn is between its eyes is the first king. As for the broken horn and the four that stood up in its place for kingdom shall arise out of the nation, but will not, but not with its power. Now, once again, they'll say, well, the first king, that was a long time ago. That was, that was, you know, remember, he, he says, this is the appointed time of the end, the end, the time of the end. So in the context, this has not happened yet. So we go on to read, it says the large horn that is between its eyes is the first king. As for the broken horn, and the four that stood up in its place, four kingdoms, those four ones that stood up in its place, those four kingdoms, those four horns, four kingdoms shall arise out of that nation. So this is this is all what we're looking for in the Middle East, but not with its power, but by the power of who? The Antichrist, who is empowered by Hasatan. Verse 23, and in the latter time of their kingdom, 
when the transgressors have reached their fullness, a king shall arise, having fierce features. This is Ezekiel chapter 38, Gog of Magog. He pulls them down from the upper north, right? A king shall arise, the Antichrist, having fierce features, who understands sinister schemes. His power shall be mighty, but not by his own power, by the power of Hasatan. He shall destroy fearfully and shall prosper and thrive for a short time. Remember when he's cast down to the earth for a short time. Hasatan and all the angels with him. It's going to be a spiritual battle. Human bodies most likely what? Demonically possessed. He shall destroy the mighty and also the holy people. The holy people. So you say, well, what happened to the rapture? The pre-trib rapture, right? I don't want to get into depth with this. But he shall destroy the mighty and also the holy people. He shall hurt them very bad. There will be a lot of death. Even to the end, the martyrs for Yeshua, they hold their testimony of Yeshua. Those who follow the commandments of the Lord and hold to the testimony. I am paraphrasing. Hold to the testimony of Yeshua. Jesus Christ. Verse 25, through his cunning, he shall cause deceit to prosper under his rule, and he shall exalt himself in his heart. He shall destroy many in their prosperity. He shall even rise against the prince of princes, Yeshua HaMashiach. But he shall be broken without human means. He shall be broken without human means. That means no military force on the face of the earth is going to take out this beast or the Antichrist. There's going to be resistance, yes. But ultimately, why? Because the Lord wants to exalt himself before all the nations, including Israel. He's going to bring them up to, to the hills in Israel, to the mountains, and he is going to handle them. He is going to crash them. He is going to destroy them. This is the rock that's not made of stone. It's not made by human hands that breaks the what? The feet, the iron, the clay mixture. The rock that comes down is Yeshua HaMashiach, which shatters, shatters the feet. Amen? Amen and amen. And so in verse 26, it says, And the vision of the evenings and mornings, remember, the set times. So that the vision of the evenings and mornings, which was told is true. So we got to look once again. What is true? We got to look once again at what it says. And we went over this earlier, the 70, uh, the last seven years. Okay, so it's not pulling up this note. There it is. The 70 weeks prophecy given in Daniel chapter 9, 24. And so this prophecy about the evenings and mornings, the days that is indicated, specifically the days, it's going to come to pass. This final week of seven years, it's going to come to pass, just as it was decreed to angel Gabriel by the Lord himself. 490 years, and we're waiting for the last sabbatical cycle of seven years. Amen. And so therefore, seal up the vision, he tells Daniel, seal up the vision. For it refers to many days in the future. The end. We just read it. It, refused to the, it refers to the end. Verse 27. And I, Daniel, fainted and was sick for days. Afterward, I arose and went about the king's business. I was astonished by the vision, but no one understood it. Now, we have to understand that Daniel... The Lord gave him Nebuchadnezzar's dreams at a time when Babylon was up in sequence. And this is in, in, uh, in, uh, in history itself. Okay. In sequence, these, these empires, he gave them the future of the Middle Perds. Okay. The Middle Persians. He gave them all these empires, the Gretchen Empire. That they rose up and they fell. 
The Ottoman Empire rose up and it fell. The Roman Empire rose up and it fell. As we read in Revelation chapter 7, I think, about the seven, right? Assyrian rose up and it fell. The Egyptian rose up and it fell. He gave this for a reason because this right here is going to happen. It's going to rise up. The autumn, the revived Ottoman Empire, the last caliphate uh, 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 super beast, it's going to rise up and it's going to fall by his hands. So just so that we'll know in the book of Daniel, these things came to pass. We can look at it in secular history and know it happened in sequence, in sequence for you non-believers out there. For those of you that don't believe, in sequence, in secular history, these empires rose up and they fell exactly on those dates. So that we'll know that this end time prophecy is going to come to pass. The Lord never speaks. He never warns. He always warns before he acts. And it will come to pass. Okay, and so we're going to go ahead now. And uh, we're going to take a minute here to go through some interesting facts, okay, about about Turkey today and uh, maybe another 15 minutes here but that's that's as that's as far as we're going to go uh, on Ezekiel the ram of the goat vision and uh, Ezekiel 38 39 Gog of Magog and now we're going to go ahead and we're going to get to some uh, some uh, very interesting places I'm going to leave all these websites for you uh, in the description box. Okay, first we're going to go to, <laughs> this is pretty cool, and I'm going to just give you a little um, little, little insight in the description box. Um, I, I really love this. This is where uh, you just put, uh, let me see here if I could, um, uh, let me see. Oh, yeah. Uh, well, you just input. You see right here it says download file of Daniel 8. Well, this website will be down there in the bottom. So, um, this is where I got the website I was showing you earlier. Okay. Uh, as I was, okay. So I'm going to just open that up for you to see it. All right. Uh, this right here. Okay. Modern, this is modern time. It's this actual time, real time, but it actually, they inputted, uh, the scriptures into, uh, Google earth. Really cool. Okay. Really cool. I'm thinking you guys will really love this. And so um, this is where I got it from, okay? So it gives us all the concordance and everything. You see down there, you can't see it on the screen, but it's giving you the longitude, uh, the latitude and the longitude. It's giving you everything here. And so this is where I got it from this website you're looking at, okay? So um, I'll leave it in the description box, okay? So uh, right here we got Daniel 9, Canaan, and it'll take you on the map, okay? Uh, Elam. We'll get pictures here to take it to you on the map, okay? So we got Greece, Media, Persia, Shush, Shushan, okay? This one here is the, the citadel. That's a picture right there. I don't know if you can see it, but the citadel, Shushan, Susa. There it is there. The Ulai Canal, the Karke River, Karun River. It's really neat, okay? Uh, for time's sake, you know, I, I know maybe for time's sake. So it actually, you input it and he'll give you the scripture here. In my vision, I saw myself in the citadel of Susa in the province of Elam. In the vision, I was beside the Ulai Canal. And so it'll take you to Bible Gateway. All right. So let's go back now. All right. So I'll leave that in the description box. It's a pretty cool website. All right. And so this is, uh, we know you could actually move it around here too. So it's pretty cool. Uh, you could just, you could zoom in. Okay. So it's pretty cool. Geocoding. It's called geocoding. Uh, openbible.info. Okay. So I'll put it in the description box. Now, this next website here. All right. So let me go ahead and close this Google Earth because I'm not going to need it no more. It takes a lot of juice out of my 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 uh, CPU. Okay, I need a better <laughs> a better laptop. <laughs> hey, I can't knock it. It's one of them ninety nine dollar ones, you know. <laughs> it is, you know. I got a lot of it, it. They actually, it's you know the Black Friday sale, right? A couple years ago, it's only a hundred bucks, but it works. It works. It does its job. So, um, 
uh, by Lenovo, <laughs> by Lenovo. And so, um, and so anyhow, uh, this is uh, Open Door Ministries. You have it there in Spanish, okay? Uh, I'll leave the, the, I'll go ahead and leave it there for you. You could always translate it, okay? Uh, los miembros uh, perseguidos de tu familia cristiana. Uh, I speak a little bit of Spanish, okay? It's a website. It's Open Door Ministries, okay? And so Open Door Ministries is really cool because they give you a map and actually it, they highlight it on here. So let me get the translation on that to English, okay? And so um, I don't know if it'll change this. Yeah, there you go. It says... Uh, Use this interactive website to learn how to pray for the persecuted members of your Christian family. All right, so we got these it, it all in, in brown, dark brown. It's restricted, okay? Uh, all these nations are Islamic. Pretty much all of them are Islamic, okay? So these are restricted. Now, we know this is Israel right now, and it tells us it's hostile. So your lighter gray uh, your mid gray, mid gray, or, or maybe beige, okay, um, is hostile nations against um, against Islam, against jihad, okay. So this is real time. This is happening. It includes West Bank and Gaza. All right now, it is hostile, very hostile. So we got Lebanon, very hostile, okay, and we got Israel, okay, hostile, okay. So we got Jordan, which is restricted, 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 restricted. Okay. There's restrictions. Uh, we're going to go to that description now. Okay. So um, just have to hover over it. So we got the colors here. In this color right here, we got hostiles. Okay. So you just hover over it. Uh, areas in observation. So they're observing these nations. Okay. Chad and Gina. Okay. Observation. Sierra Leone. So it's a pretty good website. It tells you what's going on, what nation. Uh, maybe if you travel, you know, it's, you got to be careful. Certain nations, especially if you're a believer, okay, got to be very careful. And so we got uh, Nepal is very hostile. Uh, Bangladesh, hostile. So we got Indonesia, hostile. All of Indonesia. Uh, Sri Lanka, hostile. Philippines, uh, hostile. So Ethiopia, of course, we're reading Ethiopia. It's going to be part of the end times beast. Okay, we're reading it in scripture. Ethiopia is going to be part of the last end times beast. Um, we got uh, Djibouti. I can understand that. Okay, so we got Kenya, hostile. Okay, Uganda, hostile against Islam. Tanzania, uh, we got Mozambique. We got Democratic Republic of the Congo, okay. We got Central African Republic, okay, hostile. Uh, Cameroon, hostile. Nigeria, hostile. Okay, we got Guinea, um, uh, Mali, hostile, okay. So we got all the hostile nations against jihad, okay. And uh, it's really cool. Venezuela, this is also hostile. Uh, actually, hostile in Colombia. So, in Mexico, hostile. Okay. And so, we go down here um, to the countries. Now, we're, we're going to, we're going to, we're talking about Islam. We're talking about jihad. And so, we go down to this website. I'll also leave it in the Google, in the description box. I'm sorry. And uh, we just punch on by continent, by classification, or alphabetically order. Okay. So, it has all of them. So if you want to check it out for yourself, okay, every nation here that surrounds Israel, okay, have all the nations here. So just just for example, we hit Afghanistan. Uh, it'll open up to you, okay, so you know who to pray. Uh, I'm sorry, this is not, I'm sorry, let me make a correction. I'm totally sorry. This is Voice of the Martyrs, not Open Door Ministries. Open Door Ministries is another solid uh, resource to go to, which also has a map. This is Voice, the Voice of the Martyrs. They've been around for a very long time. Please forgive me. Please forgive me. And so, Afghanistan. Okay, Afghanistan restricted. Okay, so it gives you the definition of what restriction is. 
So the good news of Christ came to Afghanistan in the second century, but there is no church building left today. Cultural and religious opposition to the gospel also means that security, security issues remain enormous challenges in this Central Asian nation. And sadly, most Afghans have never heard of the gospel, do not know a Christian, and have been indoctrinated to follow Muhammad's teachings without questioning them. Radical Islamicism and violent tribal polit uh, political activity make the nation a complicated and dangerous place for Christians to practice their faith. However, there is a special unity among Christians who work to spread the gospel in Afghanistan, natives and people close to culture, as well as external ones. We know what happened in Afghanistan. They are bravely taking risks and using every opportunity they have to help believers grow in their faith and connect with local home churches. While church growth has been slow in the more than 40 unique groups, there has been considerable Christian growth among the Hazaras and the members of other groups have also uh, begun to know Christ. And so it's going to tell you the main religions. 99.8% of the Afghans are Muslim. Of these, 90% are Sunnis and 10% Shiites. Uh, the persecutors, both local and national governments, are highly against Christians. Extremist groups, which include the Taliban and the self-proclaimed Islamic State, are active as persecutors, and believers are also persecuted by their families, friends, and communities. We can do a lot to help them, to pray for them, to help in every way you can, but number one, to pray for these places and to learn from them, to learn from them because why? Because they're showing they are the ones being martyred, not like over here in the West. We go through persecution, but not at this level. And this is this is restricted. This is not the hostile nation. Uh, we know Afghanistan was very hostile at one moment, but it is still considered hostile. Um, and so they put their lives on the line to believe in Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. And uh, we can learn a lot by these believers out there. A lot. This is nothing compared in the West. We can learn a lot about these uh, believers in these parts of these nations. Amen. And so this, I'll go ahead and leave that website. And uh, maybe you can continue uh, to continue. Keep them in your prayers. Okay. Um, and yes, once again, we can learn a lot by them. All right. So next. Voice of the Martyrs. That was Voice of the Martyrs. Please forgive me. Open Door Ministries is also a good one. Very good. Very solid. All right. So now, Organization of Turkic States. Now, am I saying that this is that? I said that Turkey is, is on the move. Uh, the, the, um, he wants to um, revive the Ottoman Empire. I told you, look at your history about the Ottoman Empire. We just showed you scripture of Gog, Magog, Asia Minor. This is 100% sure that this is the area that Gog and Magog will be coming from. Okay, and so we know we're going to look at Turkic states now. So this is called the Organization of Turkic States. Okay, now I said in previous videos, they have five under their belt. And so am I saying that this is... This is concerning the 10 nation coalition, the 10 toes or the 10 horns. Now, I can't be 100% positive, but we know that they do have, Turkey does have an organization of Turkic states under their belt. Okay, and so we're going to look at that right now. The organization of Turkic states, OTS, formerly called the Turkic Council. This is what we're going to look at, you know, if you want to keep up to date, we I looked at this a couple of years ago and it's still at five. It's still at five. OK, it's still at five. And so I've looked at this over the years. It's still at five. So we got to keep an eye on Turkey because now that we establish where Gog of Magog comes from, we got to keep an eye on Turkey. OK, and we already went through all this. OK, and so. The Organization of Turkic States, formerly called the Turkic Council, uh, or the Cooperation Council of Turkic Speaking States, is an intergovernmental organization, intergovernmental organization, comprising all but one of the internationally recognized 
Turkic sovereign states, Azerbaijan, uh, Kazakhstan, Kyrgyzstan, Turkey itself, Uzbekistan, Hungary, and Turkmenistan are observers. So Hungary and Turkmenistan are observers. So its overarching aim is promoting comprehensive cooperation among the Turkic peoples. Sounds really good, right? First proposed by Kazakh president. Okay, so it goes on to say uh, in 2006, uh, it was founded on October 9th, on October 3rd, 2009, in Azerbaijan's Nakhivan. The general secretariat is located on Turkey's Istanbul. Okay, and so there you have it now. Uh, Istanbul is the largest city in Turkey, straddling the Bosphorus Strait, the boundary between Europe and Asia. It is considered the, uh, the country's economic, cultural, and historic capital. The city has a population of over 15 million residents, comprising 19% of the population of Turkey. Uh, okay, so you can read that on your own time. And so uh, they say right here, motto, together we are stronger, right? Okay, so... Uh, there you see the crescent moon and star. So we're going to go down here. If you're ever interested, I'm going to this site. I'm going to leave it in the description box. When, if you go down, you scroll down, okay, on your right-hand side here. Um, you're going to scroll down to where it says membership, okay, membership. Now, right here, you're going to see five member states. These are the ones that when I say they're underneath their belt, his belt, uh, Turkey, right? So you want to show them, okay? And you got Azerbaijan, Kazakhstan, Kyrgyzstan, Turkey, Uzbekistan. We're going to be looking at the map right now. And then you got observers, okay? You got Hungary, Northern Cyprus, Katim. We read that in, in, uh, in the scriptures of Katim. I believe it was in uh, in Daniel itself, or Ezekiel, I'm sorry. Okay, Katim, Ezekiel, 38. And then Turkmenistan. Okay, so these are observers, observing to see if they're going to make that decision to be underneath these five. These five are already members, okay, members. Could it possibly be that these are going to be the ten? You need five more, right? Okay, so, and I've been looking at this for a couple years now. It's still at five. Okay, still at five. All right, so now we're going to look at this, this Azerbaijan on the map, okay? So we're going to go to Google Earth again, okay? Let me get some water here. Let it, let it upload. This is what it, it means to be watchmen on the wall. Uh, that term, be Bereans and watchmen on the wall, prophetic watchmen in the Middle East because it's Israel-centric. We just went through all the scriptures. And so the Lord calls us. Remember, he says, is, is it is, are you if he that the prophets that I wrote about in the prophets? Um, I'm uh, paraphrasing, but this is what he said, you know, concerning his prophets, Torah and the prophets, Torah and the prophets. Okay, and so especially in the days we're living in. And so we want to keep our eye, be watchmen on the wall. So once again, on Google Earth, okay, so we read, we got Turkey, okay, itself, uh, one of the five, one of the five. Then we have Azerbaijan, okay. Uh, and so we, right here in the middle, we have Armenia, okay. So we know Turkey, the Ar Armenian genocide happened to Armenia, and they don't want to apologize. He actually, his mindset, he actually rejoices. Uh, this is what they do uh, once a year, okay? Uh, they rejoice, okay, uh, at these at these um, victories. They call them victories. Uh, Recep Tarek Erdogan, okay? So he rejoices at these victories, the, at the Armenian genocide. You can look it up yourself. So he wants Armenia. He wants to take Armenia. Of course he does. Okay. So we got Azerbaijan. So he's already in Azerbaijan. We understand that that's one of the members. So then we go to Turkmenistan, which is another member. Okay. So these are members. Okay. So as I'm, I'm showing you this, because remember, they come at Iran. 
So look how ginormous Iran is. So this piece of the puzzle, okay, he needs it. He needs the power Iran has to accomplish, okay, the Ottoman Empire, the revival of the Caliphate and the Ottoman Empire. And this is scripture. It's going to take place. It's going to take place. He's going to take Iran. But just look at what's going on here. I'm just saying at a, at a biblical view on the maps, I told you I'm going to be bringing you maps in real time. We got Turkey, Azerbaijan, Turkmenistan, okay? Uh, and we had Kyrgyzstan, right? And uh, we also had, I think it was uh, Uzbekistan. Yes, Uzbekistan. So we have one, two, three, four, including himself, Turkey, five. So this is what I mean by chess pieces. This is how he sees it. Remember, he's a man of war. He wants to revive the Ottoman Empire, and it's going to happen by Scripture. By Scripture, and that's the most important, by Scripture, as we just went through, okay? And so he's putting himself around. If you see it right here, if he takes Afghanistan, Pakistan, okay? All right, then he's surrounding Iran. He's not dumb. He's not dumb at all. If he's going to restore the Ottoman Empire, he's going to take, well, it is going to happen, right? We just read in Scripture. Now, is it going to be Erdogan himself? Well, he's got the ball rolling, like I said earlier. So it looks like he's surrounding, surrounding. So we got to keep an eye on Erdogan and what he's doing. Okay, so surrounding Iran, right? Uh, this is right here where it was prophesied right here um, in Daniel uh, chapter 8, right here. Okay, this area, the Ulam, uh, the citadel of Shushan, the Ulai River, all right here. Okay, and so we have uh, up here, we have Kurdistan up here, and he doesn't like Kurdistan either. Actually, uh, ISIS, he helped out ISIS a lot. Okay. So we're going to get into that another time. So we got to watch what he's doing. Okay. So another um, website here. We're almost done. I'm just showing you these things. Uh, just it might spark your interest. Uh, we got a Turkish state railways. He, he owns uh, his own rail station. Okay. Just so you'll know. Uh, do not be deceived. Turkey is beautiful. Beautiful. Okay. But remember the coup. Remember what he did. He showed his face. And he's been showing his face a lot more lately. He's outspoken. Okay. He's very outspoken. And so we go ahead and read into this. So I I, I have, I, I did highlight at the very bottom. But the reason why I showed you this is because it's a regular railway, railway. Okay. For persons, for people. Very beautiful. Look at this. Very nice. Okay, but that's not really my concern about people. Now, I'm going to show you that also he has a freight. He has a freight trains. He, he delivers containers of we don't know who or what is in these containers. So could this possibly be? A, well, you can. And, and, and if he needs inspection, right? Well, if he owns all this and he owns that land, well, guess who inspects his freight? Well, just himself, okay? Just check mark, okay, let it go, okay? Talking about nuclear weapons, whatever. I'm just saying, okay? I'm not, I'm not saying, but I'm saying, okay? So we got to read between the lines here. The Turkish State Railways. And so we're going to go down here. So another is the TCDD. So we go down here, and we're going to scroll down to the bottom, okay? And uh, I got highlighted here. Let me scroll down to the bottom. It shows you where this railway goes through. Now, he wants to make it go all the way to China. Okay. And so another indication, right, if who's on whose team, right? He's going to use whoever he needs to use to overpower the Middle East. He's going to deceive whoever he needs to deceive. He's going to gain his momentum however he needs to do it politically-wise. He's already doing it. Okay, so um, this is where it's it's freight operations. 
okay, freight operations. So it's not only for passengers, very beautiful trains, but for freight operations. And so um, you could read this on your own time. I'm going to leave it in the description box, okay? And so I just highlighted right here. It says TCD has plans to strengthen uh, freight traffic by adding 4,000 kilometers uh, conventional lines until 2023, right? Uh, that was last year. That includes a new international rail connection connections to Georgia, Iraq, Iran. TCDD is also constructing 18 logistic centers to enable transportation of more loads by rail. Okay. TCDD is planning to increase its transit traffic uh, by constructing an iron silk road to connect Europe to Asia, right? China, right? TCDD wants to uh, wants to have share from the freight train traffic between Europe and China through this line, all right? What better way, right? And also, last but not least, the ports. He has ports tied up. Look at this. The state railway railways own and operate seven ports throughout the country and has connections to two more ports. The ports TCDD owns Owns are the port of Hedarpasa and Istanbul on the southern mouth of Bosphorus, the port of Izmir on the Aegean Sea, the port of Mersin, the port of Isikinrum on the Mediterranean Sea. This is spoken of a lot in, in scripture. Okay, the Mediterranean Sea, the port of Bandurma, the Sea of Marmana or Marmara, the port of Derinz. Uh, on the Gulf Izmet and the port of Samsun, on the Black Sea, right above Turkey, right? On the Black Sea. Railways have connections, says the railways have connections to the port of uh, Zangulak, Zanguladak, also owned by Turkic, Turkey, uh, Kurumu Turkish Coal, uh, Coal Company, the port of uh, Tekayoy, okay, right there, and the port of, right? He's not, he's, he's very smart. He's a businessman and he has taken over little by little. He has all these ports and this freight train railway. He is, he is, uh, devising a plan for sure. Okay. His ideology, he wants to revive the Ottoman Empire. And I don't know, it's going to be, no, it's not going to be him personally, but he is, he's got the ball rolling, right? You got to watch him. And so now, uh, the next, uh, we got, oh, this was Roos, okay, so we could take that down, okay. <laughs> Roos, not Roche, not Roche, Roos, okay. The Rooskies, right? Not the Roshis, Roshkies, right? So let me take that off now, and let's go ahead and take off this Google Earth here, because it takes up a lot of memory. Uh, Roche, once again, it's Roche in Hebrew. It's a Hebrew word. Okay, so that debunks that, right? It debunks it geographical wise and word wise. Okay, we don't know what who's going to be the players that are going to help the beast accomplish what he needs to do. But remember, uh, let me go ahead and take that off. We already spoke about it. Um, Tayyik, I believe it's Tayyik. Uh, it's in the Quran. Tayyik, you can look it up. I think it's T A Y I Q. Uh, Tayyik is, uh, uh, don't mark my words, but I think it's Tayyik. Uh, it is actually, uh, deceiving. It's, uh, it's, it's, um, uh, it's taught by Islam. Okay. That they could deceive you in order for you to become a believer, uh, of Islam and, uh, and proclaim Muhammad as your Allah, as your God. Okay. So anyhow, um, yes, it's called Talik, Talik, I believe. Uh, it's actually taught by them. They're actually, it's okay. In the Quran, they can deceive you. Okay, so why do I say this? Because he's going to deceive many in getting his way. Okay, many. All right, so do not be deceived. Remember the beast, do not be deceived. The number of the beast, 666, has to do with Islam. It's a mark. It's Islam. It's a mark that you receive. Okay, in other words, you're going to receive them or else, okay? And so we it's all scriptural, okay? This is why we're bringing you this, okay? And so it all ties in together. Maybe we'll be doing a, a, 
a video on the anti on uh, on 666 the number okay um and so let's go ahead um maybe you heard of Walid Walid Shuibat Walid Shuibat in theater his son uh Shuibat uh they he done a lot and he has given a lot of information out of course Joe Richardson Chadwick Harvey and, and many others um are also but uh the Islamic uh, Antichrist Beast uh, book by by um, uh, by Joe Richardson. I put it in the last video, so if you want to check that out, um, Mid East Mid East Beast and and God's Prophetic Timeline by Chad Carvey. Excellent, excellent, uh, and so many others. Daniel Seckham. Uh, I could go on and on. Uh, McCandles. Uh, uh, just so many. Uh, I, I can't name them all right now. Uh, I'll know all this information even way better than I do, right? Um, and so just excellent teachers, you know, uh, scholarly teachers. If you want backup to all this, uh, those are scholarly teachers. You can look up, you know, Joel Richardson, number one best selling book, uh, in, in, <laughs> number one selling book. I mean, he, for Mid East, Mid East, Mid East Beast. Okay. Um, and so if you want solid resources, I got plenty of solid resources for you. Uh, Sonia Zom, uh, just so many other Christopher Manti, uh, End Time Church. Um, it goes on El Fadi, El Fadi, uh, Sam Shimon, um, just many others. Okay. Um, and I, I'm always forgetting a name here and I, and I have to ask for forgiveness. But anyhow, um, I will pr probably have to look it up now because I feel foolish. Uh, cause I always, uh, he makes this sound. He goes, hey, do, 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 do. <laughs> he comes alongside and I, I'm going to have to look him up. I'm really going to have to look him up because, um, yeah, I'm going to have to do that before we end this today because I'm going to feel foolish if I don't. Anyhow, let me go ahead and uh, that's it for today. Actually, that's it for today. Okay. So, um, uh, should I? Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna do it uh, just just so we can get this. Okay, so I'm gonna pull up his name. I can't uh, get it right now. So, um, oh, another excellent resource resource. Okay, and uh, uh, the Wadi. Okay. Dot uh, org. I'll leave this also in the description box. Uh, Org. Okay, and then we're going to go ahead and, and, uh, uh, org.com. Okay. Uh, and I'll give you that name. Oh, wow. Okay. So, yeah, it's not going to reload. Okay. So it's not going to happen. The wadi.org. Okay. And so let me go ahead and, uh, it's not going to bring it up. So let's go ahead and, um, uh, let me see. Uh, okay, so, um, yeah, <laughs> so let me see right here, <laughs> let me see, let me see, uh, okay, so this is the wadi.org, I'll go ahead and leave it in the description box, okay, so we're going to go back here. And I'm going to give you a name here because I told you I, I have to do it now. Okay. I, I feel kind of foolish uh, because my memory fails me sometimes. Okay. So we're going to go to um, uh, Beth Grover, all courses. Oh, I got it. Okay. This is an excellent, the Wadi, the Wadi. Okay. I'm sure you can't see the Wadi up there, but I'll leave it in the description box. Um, this is Dr. J. Smith. Okay. That's his name. <laughs> okay. Radical evangelism to Muslims. Okay. Very, very good website. It has, uh, courses, free courses. There's, uh, Professor J. Smith. Okay. So J. Smith. Okay. Um, there he is right there. E -d 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 -d. <laughs> he goes like, <laughs> he knows his stuff. I mean, this is a solid resource along with Al Fadi and all my, all my br beloved brothers. Okay. And so, uh, very, very scholarly. I mean, yeah. Okay. And so that's him right there. I just couldn't throw him under the bus again. I've done it so many times. I don't know why I can't remember his name, Dr. J. Smith. And so, uh, it has very many others. Okay. So, um, uh, Joshua Lingell, 
okay, um, uh, Joshua Lingell. It has courses, okay, free courses. You could take these courses for free. Uh, very good, very good. If you want to learn more about Islam and what they're about, okay, uh, Joshua uh, Lingell, Dr. J. Smith, uh, Dr. Cezanne uh, Tavasoli, and uh, Beth Grove. Beth Grove is on fire, okay? Uh, and so, behind the veil of Islam, and so she is on fire too, okay? And so, um, I'm going to go ahead and, and then that, and uh, we're going to get back to you now, and we're going to go ahead and end for today, okay? I know this has went on quite a while, all right? And so, um, I'll put those resources uh, down below. And, uh, yeah, I'll go ahead and end this today. And um, I think that's it. I think I showed you the maps, everything. All right. Well, um, that's it for today. Uh, thank you so much. Um, um, oh, I did it. Okay, let me go ahead and show you one more, which I almost forgot. Okay. Uh, remember I told you that that Iran is in power right now, pretty much. Okay, we know this for a fact. Uh, so this is just a few, a few. And these are not counting the small groups that is underneath him. Okay, so this is just, um, this is uh, jihadist groups, it says, associated with Iran typically fall under the category of Shia militant organizations rather than Sunni jihadist groups like those affiliated with Al-Qaeda or ISIS. Here are some notable Shia militant groups that have been linked to Iran. Uh, Hezbollah, Lebanese Shia group with strong ties to Iran and Syria, known for its militant activities and support from Iran. Uh, Harakat, Hezbollah al-Nujaba, Iraqi Shia parliamentary group that operates in Iraq and Syria, known for its close ties to Iran and involvement in the Syrian civil war. Uh, Asaib al Haqq, al -Haq, uh, the Iraqi Shia military group, paramilitary group that was formed after the U.S. invasion of Iraq, uh, known for its militant action against U.S. forces, later involvement in the fight against ISIS. It has strong ties to Iran. We know Iraq, uh, modern day, is actually Babylon. Okay. And so, excellent book by Chad Harvey. You can read it. Um, as we know now, it's moved up to Medo-Persia. And the last would be, uh, once again, uh, um, Asia Minor, Gog and Magog, amen, modern-day Turkey. So uh, number four, Kata'ib Hezbollah, Iraqi Shia militant group formed in the wake of U.S. invasion of Iraq. Known for attacks against U.S. and coalition forces, it has closed ties to Iran's Islamic Revolutionary Guard, IRGC, Corps. Uh, Badar organization, Badar Brigade, Iraqi Shia political and mil uh, military organization, originally formed during the Iraq-Iran war. It has transformed into a political party, uh, but remains a military wing that has received support from Iran. Okay, And the Houthi rebels, very much in the Middle East right now. We got U.S. Uh, US troops over there fighting the Navy against the Houthi rebels. Okay, We must keep them in our prayers. Uh, Yemeni Shia group that has been involved in a protracted conflict against the Yemeni government and Saudi-led coalition forces. It is widely believed to receive support from Iran. Yes, uh, we can't forget Qatar, major player of support, uh, financial support. Uh, just check it out. Follow the money. Okay. Although the extent and nature of this support are debated. Okay. So once again, I also gave um, another source. Um, Ryan Morrow, Ryan Morrow. Okay, so he's another source to follow the money. Check it out for yourself. Um, these groups are predominantly Shia and operate in various countries, primarily in the Middle East. They have been involved in conflicts that align with Iran's geopolitical interest and have received varying degrees of support from the Iranian government or IRGC. It's important to note that while these groups are often labeled as jihadists, Due to their militant actions, they do not subscribe to the same Sunni jihadist ideology as groups like Al-Qaeda or ISIS, but as we see, the same ideology. So that's saying it in a nice way, right? Uh, we know the same. We see Hamas that is under also Iran, okay? 
and uh, Lebanon. Okay, so we see what they have done. This is the mindset of all those that are enemies against Israel. All of them. All of them. This is the same mindset. Okay, uh, this is the same mindset. And so anyhow, that's it for today. Uh, that was the last one that I almost forgot to show you. Uh, showing you that Iran is in power today, but that power will be taken by Asia Minor, Gog of Magog in that day, the ram and the goat vision by Daniel, and all the, the maps that we showed you. So I hope I did an okay job on presenting this to you. Um, you know, I, I just, I do my best. You know, I know I was, I was here and there all over the place, kind of, but I hopefully you got this uh, and you understood this. Um, and always remember, there's only one last seven years. There's only one great tribulation. There's only one rapture, okay? There's only one resurrection day, and that is the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. And if you haven't placed your faith and trust in Jesus Christ, Yeshua, Messiah, I, I would only ask um, that you would, okay? Today is the day of salvation. Remember, he's asking for obedience, um, obedience to his what? To his commandments and his ways. And this is all the way since the beginning, okay? In the Garden of Eden, okay? So he's always asked for our obedience. And uh, he has given us a way to be obedient. And this is by the power of his Holy Spirit that he poured out on Shavuot. Uh, as we become believers, he helps us to be obedient. We must learn the commandments of our Lord so that we can exalt him and so that we can please him. Okay, so that we can train our children up in the instructions, the commandments of the Lord. And so I also want to mention that a lot of those sources that I just showed you, Jay Smith, I'm not too sure uh, if they follow the Torah like I do and like I see scripture uh, because there are there is a division. And so I don't know if they do, but they are believers in Jesus Christ, Yeshua, nonetheless. Uh, they are part of the body. They love Jesus Christ a lot. They love him with all their hearts. Uh, and so I just, I continue to pray that they would see the truth of his commandments and how wonderful they are. And so maybe all of them do serve and, and worship the commandments. I don't know. But uh, but I know they're believers in Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach. Okay. And so uh, may they come to the knowledge of the truth and have that uh uh, uh, that shift, okay? Um, I'm, I'm, I'm losing that word, that paradigm shift, okay? Maybe we'll have the paradigm shift and know how wonderful it is to follow his commandments, okay? So that we can please him, okay? Uh, that we can exalt his holy name. This is why I'm making all these videos, uh, because he warned us through his prophets. And so, once again, my name is David, uh, set apart soldiers in Yeshua Messiah ministry. Uh, please share these videos, these last day prophet portions. Uh, we must learn to be Bereans and watchmen on watchmen on the walls. Okay, and so um, if you have any questions, leave them in the description box down below or in the comments. I'll try to get back to you. I'll answer them just as best as I could. Okay, uh, concerning these prophets. Okay, and what the Lord spoke through them. Okay, and so. I'll be coming back with uh, video number six. Uh, I don't know what we're going to do. Maybe a little bit more Daniel, but I'm going to start getting into the Exodus, uh, the greater Exodus. I got, I got a video lined up, uh, a lot of scriptures lined up, the greater Exodus, okay? And so it's just going to be nothing but scriptures. Beautiful, wonderful, okay? And so, uh, so let's see what happens on the next video, okay? So Shabbat Shalom in your home. I know this was a long one. But hopefully you rest easy throughout the day and let us worship the Lord in spirit and in truth because there's only one Sabbath day and this is the seventh day of the week. And he commanded us to keep it and rest and uh, and worship him in spirit and in truth. It is the Sabbath, the fourth of the Ten Commandments. And so may all of you have a happy, restful Sabbath. Those who follow his ways and practice his commandments uh, righteously okay and so and all those that don't come on join us <laughs> join us he wants to, he wants us to rest relax and worship him and follow his instructions okay it is wonderful it is beautiful it is awesome okay let me tell you that okay so 
Come and join us, okay? All you believers out there in Jesus Christ, Yeshua Mashiach, okay? So that we can please the Father all together as one body, okay? Not different bodies, as one body. And he is the head of the body, Jesus Christ, Yeshua Messiah. Goodbye for now, but never forever. <laughs>